Hello YouTube viewers welcome to my show Rocket Monday in today's episode we're going to take a look at space tourism the newly emerging market so let's dive right into it now first and foremost you have to understand the idea now all of you are familiar with the fact that space is expensive so where this money is going to come from to give you a context of this tourism is a very big business now to uh, estimate in 2016 global tourism business have created upwards of 7.6 trillion dollars to give you a context of that uh, basically that's uh, higher than many nations gdps and uh, usa has roughly 13 trillion in terms of uh, gross domestic product or 14 trillion and nasa's budget in that same time was only 18.5 billion dollars to give you idea to give you a simple context of it there is a lot of money in it even if you can capture a small portion of that even like a very small 1% of it it's still more than sufficient so we got that now uh, when you're selling it as a experience like of course you're going to be like okay it's a tourism somebody has to sell it some agency has to sell it what they're going to sell film this is truly practically speaking out of this world experience like there is no uh, you know comparison amongst it like you can say okay like swiss alp but again if you went to swiss alp will you enjoy mount everest as much no because both more or less are uh, same thing now of course like every mountain range on earth looks more or less the same simply because they are on earth when you go above earth things change like it literally is out of this world experience there is no experience that even comes close to describing it and the most fun part it has zero g experience people pay a lot of money to experience zero g even for a small time many of you are familiar with the plane known as vomit comet or zero g craft basically it goes parabola and then free falls for a while and so you can have zero g experience for 30 seconds so sometimes uh, they will do multiple parabola so during one flight time you can get upwards of uh, 10 minutes of zero uh, g experience so it is a big uh, enough uh, market that people will pay there is a lot of money and even if small portion of them paid it's more than enough so this is the idea of it now uh, let's first look at government like there are so many uh, you know space agencies like esa uh, roscosmonaut isro jaxa nasa and all that so but be mindful it's not a preferred option for Uh, any space agency simply because that means they have to divert their resources so uh, if a space company let's say isro india space company is like okay uh, should we divert our money to make sure they safe for two reasons or should we launch another satellite that will help us you know assure in better internet connectivity around the you know rural area or you know have better weather satellite system so of course you can understand from a government point of view tourism really does not justify the cost and uh, all the times that they have done that like be it nasa be it trust cosmonaut where they have taken actual tourists to space uh, it does provide a small income now what i mean by small income is like it's very little like practically speaking how much money they will spend versus uh, how much money they will get out of the ticket is very small like of course it's not a loss for them but it's not that much so let's say they are getting 20 million from a billionaire their ticket price would be roughly 18 million so it's not a you know 20 million dollar profit it would be like you know 2 million profit so it's not a very big profit however uh, that's the sole reason roscosmonaut uh, takes many uh, you know civilian passengers but it's not a priority like flat out uh, because to make sure uh, your funding is not cut you have to send people up there that can die and without collapsing your economy basically if civilian dies it's a completely different thing if a soldier dies if an astronaut dies that's a completely different thing like you expect them to you know know the risk you expect them to take that risk but if civilian dies like you and i that's a completely different new uh, you know new cycle you don't want that so it, that's why it's not priority however right now if you are a citizen with boat load of money this is the only option it has been done in past but uh, uh, it's kind of very tricky to get so that's the government aspect of it it's not a priority for them nor it should be so then we come to the private players which has been you know wrestling up all this crowd so first 
and foremost is virgin galactic this is the first started one and uh, this is kind of old at this point but uh, he uh, basically virgin galactic also suffers from the same fact they were selling ticket very early on as in upwards of 2010 and uh, the plane supposed to start going in 2012 suffice to say it hasn't done that and i'm not even sure they're gonna pull it off before 2020 and this is not a orbital craft basically they take a plane take a smaller plane from that or smaller rocket at this point and then go to a parabolic orbit basically the orbit is not orbital it's not circular it's just a ballistic trajectory they will go up stay there for a few minutes and then fall back it's not orbit they will not go around the planet this is sub orbital system but uh, this started this whole idea like you know booking tickets and paying a lot of people paid money good money for this but it has suffered one casualty at this point in time so this is not uh, like you know as rosy as uh, uh, basically richard branson wanted to it out to be it has taken life and not to mention is behind schedule on a level that you can't even comprehend then we come to spacex now spacex is a privately owned company so that's awesome they are free from stock market that's very good however they still are run on money so this billionaire comes along and uh, be mindful you can check my whole uh, video on spacex like bfr versus sls and uh, the whole idea is that elon musk want to build bfr now bfr will only get funding once it's already built like nasa will pay for bfr once it's built or enough of it has been built that nasa has confidence like that's why uh, basically falcon 1 was built then falcon 5 was planned once government saw okay falcon 1 can be built and tested by and you know deliver payload then they got funding for falcon 9 same will happen with bfr to get that funding this uh, gentleman comes along and he is the first paid tourist that will go to space and orbit the moon that is the crucial aspect uh, there has been many paid tourist in space but none of them have ventured outside the leo basically low earth orbit he will be the first one to do that and he have put down some very good amount of money for that to help them along so that's the second one and then we have third one blue origin basically passion project of jeff bezos at this point i think he's the richest man alive and uh, he's slowly working on and this is a his a rocket which is also sub orbital uh, so that means it's not going to do orbit so all things considered you might think okay spacex the only one that can classify as you know properly in space uh, that's true and uh, another way to look at it is there is a something known as karman line that is legally specified line if you cross that line you will get a, basically you will be classified as astronaut as in somebody who ventured in space not by training or something it's just that to cross that threshold to cross that height you will be classified as astronaut that height is generally kept at 100 kilometers so generally there are some private company that are trying to lower that because there have been some attempts that satellite successfully orbited at that low altitude so they are saying you know lower it a bit and that way anybody who's selling this sub orbital they can classify as that you know you are going to into basically space so there is a bit of politics here so be mindful they have been going on for quite a while spacex is uh, you know it's a uh, in their vested interest that uh, this bfr gets built so for that reason you can put your money on that uh, virgin galactic i'm not sure they have been delayed behind schedule for a very long time and uh, he had also the same issue of elon musk like you know overselling like in 2012 we going to have it and blue origin that's uh, very calmly quietly working in the background they they don't make a giant announcement and things of that nature they are just working at it and they are uh, gaining contract and traction in ULA and NASA so they can slowly uh, you know come up in our future so these are the big private players now these don't interest many of you but uh, many of you are interested in the small players like you know if you go into space tourism every every youtube video is like you know space tourism next around the corner this company wants to do that like this company this company that company big low air space and there are a lot of uh, company that want to start it out and they are very starry eyed dreamer the reason why i don't like them is most of them are running on hope like if you ask them like okay how you going to send it they going to like okay i'm going to use you know uh, falcon 9 okay awesome cool uh, where are you going to build your uh, you know habitat like basically this unit no idea like you should figure out how you're going to build this first before you figure out how you're going to launch it like of course the uh, lowing the launch vehicle gives you a very good dimension accuracy but you have to build it so uh, this company uh, big low airspace they have better grasp on things simply because they actually are a partner for nasa and they have provided habitats in the past inflatable habitats is their speciality so they do have uh, that idea but again they are also overselling it like all of them like this design i have provided links below you can check it out for yourself but uh, all of them are running on like uh, basically oh uh, we're going to start this we're going to do this and in 2020 we'll have it like 
that's two years from now that's uh, like uh, most of them the oldest of them i'm seeing is like you know five years ago they are like you know that good now it takes decades to build a proper space infrastructure like uh, international space station was not built on one day so uh, be mindful it takes time it takes preparation it takes a, a ginormous time like l- remove the money let's say you are rich enough let's say you are rich enough that you can afford your own rocket or you can afford your own uh, basically company of uh, brilliant people you still need to spend time that's why i don't like any of them it's like simply all of them are like oh five years from now i'm gonna do this like okay do you have a plan in the motion like do you have a factory right now where you are uh, you know building it do you have a giant vacuum chamber where you're going to test it out no none of those things but we are going to do in five years that's not how that works please for crying out loud it's like all the deeper i look into them i'm like really like this is how you're going to do it so suffice to say uh, these small players do not uh, inspire a lot of confidence in me like of course i would love to be proven wrong in this but let's see then we come to the is it really going to happen the future of it now if you re- if humanity really want to make space accessible to you and i basically the common folk it has to go bigger now the biggest idea out there it's a gateway foundation that is this architecture the idea is this is a spinning habitat and uh, in the center you will have basically zero gravity so basically that if you want to experience space you will be in this area and if you want to experience moon gravity this core will have moon gravity so if you want to go to moon you can train here and now if you want to go to mars this outer ring will Will have gravity equivalent of mars so this way nasa can lease out let's say this area and uh, let's say whoever is trying to do moon mining they can uh, train their astronaut or whoever is doing that train their worker here and whoever wants to go for you know just normal fun zero g experience they can do this so this approach has one core advantage it's like if they start building it like a small section everybody will start pouring in money because it's in their best interest so bigger is better and this way they can build a very ginormous station the target uh, audience for this is like upwards of 10 to 20000 people in orbit all the time 24 into 7 so that's a completely different uh, ball game and not to mention because it has centrifuge capacity as in like it is rotating it has gravity people should be able to survive there for longer and uh, because they have mars gravity and moon gravity and zero gravity there are a uh, multiple things that can be done for it like say uh, you want to shoot a sci-fi movie the hardest thing to do is uh, shoot a zero g scene you see uh, shoot it here like scientists will be busy in their moon orbit you, uh, you can you know have a theme park rides in the mars orbit so the bigger you make it the more things can be done in one place and the easier it becomes to fund for that reason i am very uh, hopeful with this idea however this is still a concept so please relax it's not like uh, you're going to say it's st- uh, starting tomorrow so this is the craft that they are aiming for that craft is the size of space shuttle so understand that this is humongous and this should give you a scale idea how big that is like this is international space station that is uh, gateway foundation so this is a good idea because this actually helps the funding along it's like uh, every small country can chip in a little bit and a little bit and over time it, this could become big enough and all those small small startups that have no uh, like uh, no proper launch capacity they can also just chip in their money and like okay we're going to own a small sector or uh, let's say we, you take our money and you give us like let's say one corridor cool awesome so this way things can be done like but if somebody says like uh, multiple companies are making their multiple small resorts all of them going to starve to death simply because if uh, that many people are providing uh, basically services they have to keep their cost down if they keep their cost down how the heck they going to recover their uh, you know original investment but if you make them big lot of people can you know go the throughput will be higher meaning you uh, the ticket prices will be lower which means more people will go which means more money which means more profit so this idea of like uh, you know small small companies i i really don't think that's feasible can spacex do it again no like spacex will only take people uh, like they they want to make bfr as a rocket simply because it's reusable and they're going to be like okay first launch is nasa second launch is a you know private mission whoever pays for it the, but they themselves is not going to do it so all the other companies they have to come together so we have to go the conglomerate route basically where multiple small companies come together and do something awesome as this outside of this let's say uh, if people companies don't come along and like uh, many small countries chip in this sort of th- dream will be well, just dream so uh, at the future i am talking 2030s to 2050s we will have space tourism because we already had it in past it's just that uh, to have the tourism at a level where people like oh i'm going to europe and somebody will like yeah, nah, i am saving money so i can go to space that's going to take a while 
so this was my presentation on space tourism i hope you liked it or learned from it in that case please leave a like if you didn't don't worry about it you can dislike it i would urge you to leave a comment on the episode and what you want to see in the next episode please subscribe share it amongst your friend hashtag s2t and i would ask you to press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching